In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain how a roof design with an overhang can create problems in high winds, tornadoes, and hurricanes. And what we're looking at here is the wind coming to the front of a building. I'm kind of using this right here, this area, as a the area that's getting hit by the wind the most, the surface area, as uh, you might suggest. And of course, when the wind is coming forward towards something, it needs a place to go once it hits it. And that means it's going to go off to the side in a variety of different directions. And I would imagine even down. So it's going to go to the left, to the right. And as far as our roof overhang goes, any air or wind that goes up is going to create a problem for our roof. And this is how roofs get ripped off and houses fall down during tornadoes. Once the roof is ripped, ripped off or lifted off, it severely weakens the structure. And uh, once that happens, the walls uh, cave in and you don't have a house anymore. So this is a kind of, I'm gonna do a couple more videos. I'll put links to them here and maybe even create a playlist. But uh, I'm gonna try and explain how some framing methods might be better than others when it comes to building a house in high wind areas and tornadoes, trying to make a safer house. Now, here we have the side of the house and again, more surface area. So this would be, we have the surface area up here and down here. So kind of above the wall framing line on the gable end and on the wall here, if the building is gonna be longer, we could have a larger force. So air that is going to be forced to the side could actually be forced up because the surface area is a lot longer. But again, we have the same problem here. Once the air starts blowing hard enough um, underneath the overhangs, it could uh, pull the roof off. Now, the larger the overhang, now if we go to this one here, we don't have that large of an overhang. I only extended this a foot out. We only have a one foot distance all the way around the house. Two foot is common. And uh, in high wind areas, what I'm about to suggest in this video is you might not want an overhang at all. Just get rid of it. And if you have a building with a flat roof on it or a low sloped roof, you can see here where the air could go around it. It's not going to be uh, blocked by any obstacles like the roof overhang. But if we throw something on there, you can see where something like this could be uh, easily lifted off if it's not firmly and securely attached to the wall surface. On the other side, you can see here, if we just have uh, wind or air coming in here, it will disperse, but it will still be putting pressure on the wall itself. So, it's not just that the air is going to be dispersing like it was on the other side to the right or the left or the top. We are still going to have some pressure and I don't know what it would take for enough wind, what, what it would need 100 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour to actually blow a building down that um, didn't have a roof overhang on it like, like this one right here. Now here's an example of something with only a two inch roof overhang and um, the house still looks fairly decent. I put a low slope here. I think this is about a three and 12 roof pitch um, in between a two and a three and 12 pitch. And um, I, I lowered the pitch because the higher the pitch, if we have a, a six and 12 or something, that's providing more surface area on the gable end for the wind to push up against and it's also creating more surface area for the air to go over here. So it's kind of like air going over a smaller obstacle, like a one inch ball versus a golf ball, let's say, versus a beach ball. Going to be a little easier to push the, push the beach ball, push the beach ball than it would be to push a, um, or a, a golf ball size beach ball versus a um, golf by a beach ball that would be something like a two foot in diameter. Hope that makes sense. 
take a look at the overhang here it's nice and small it's not very big so the air that's going to be going it's not going to be putting a lot of pressure on this two inch surface where it would be if it was a two foot overhang now if we go to a hip roof um, this is kind of you know you're going to have the same amount of wall surface uh, vertically for a hip roof. You're not going to have the big gable end over here where you're going to be putting pressure on it. And uh, the air is going to be able to flow over here and over here a little easier. So if we had the gable end over here, the air is going to hit this a little harder because we got more surface area here. So I think a hip roof design might be the way to go. This would be the surface area here, the additional surface area that the gable roof would provide us with versus over here. So if the wind's coming from this side or this side, the gable end's not going to be as much of a problem. But if it's coming from this side, I could see where the gable end could be a problem. So anyway, I hope this helps. I am going to put some more videos together and attempt to help someone who's trying to build a house in an area they're worried about this uh tornadoes i believe it is and hopefully by the end of the series they will have an understanding as well as you and even myself a better understanding of how high winds um, can affect buildings and what we can do about them to make them a little stronger